Hi, Aid here from Rev Monkey. Thank you for joining me again. This time I'm out in my own Mercedes Benz C63 AMG Edition 507. There were 233 of these brought to the UK, and the most common colour is white, followed by black, then a dark grey, silver, and red. Over 50% of those cars, in fact, a lot more than that, were coupes. There were some two uh, four door sedans, as the Americans would say, we call them saloons. And uh, the rarest car of the lot was actually the estate version. There were currently only 180 C63 edition 507s on the road. There were 23 under Sawn. Now you can compare that with over 3,000 standard C63 cars, and then you realize just how rare this is. Now it's not as rare as the Black Series, which is why the Black Series is up about 130, 140, 150,000 pounds. But for about 35 to 45 and the summer approaching 50, this car is clearly a bargain and the car stands out from a normal C63 with the side stripes on the side as you might be able to see here. Also the lightweight alloy dark wheels and these two vents on the bonnet aiding cooling that you get on the Black Series. So 233 of these edition 507s were originally built, 94 of those were built in 2013, 126 were built in 2014 and 13 were built in 2015 up to about early March and this is a 2015 car so ultimately a bit rarer. Apparently I've read that the brakes have been upgraded on this car from the standard C63 but I'm not sure if that is actually true. It doesn't feel like it's true. The brakes on this car aren't particularly good, <laughs> as it happens. I mean, you kind of put in, nothing, not a lot happens. Whereas on the Amira, for example, you just touch it and you kind of go through the windscreen. But that's just down to kind of how the brake pedal sets up and how it engages with the brakes. Ultimately, this car does brake well and fairly evenly down from fast speeds, given its weight and the speed it's attaining. But I mean, what I love about this car really is that V8 rumble. It's got instant torque anywhere. As I said, it feels ferociously fast in any circumstance. And as I said, it feels faster even though my 430 with similar horsepower, even though it's heavier. It's just the way it delivers it. It's ferocious as well. And the noise is incredible. So often I'm driving it, even in the winter, with the windows down and the sunroof back and really enjoying the fruitiness of that engine. Uh, so the car's got 507 horsepower. That's 56 more than the standard C63. And each engine is personally signed well, I say personally, but it's signed by the person who's supposed to have built the engine. Now I say it's got forged pistons, connecting rods and lightweight crankshaft from the SLS AMG, which is also carried over to the Black Series, which gives it incredible robustness for daily use. Um, the engines are renowned to be bulletproof. I must admit it's just been impeccable under my ownership. The boot itself is uh, pretty cavernous. Do have a little bit of a hoover. The seats go down. But actually, it's a huge, huge boot. And uh, I've, I haven't had a time I've ever kind of filled that up when I've got my golf cot in, golf bag, golf clubs, golf balls, golf shoes, and all that paraphernalia. Does a great job. See, heated rear screen. The black on black looks great, quite heavily tinted. I do like the red calipers with the red lights at the back there. Getting a little bit dirty, especially in this little car park. It is still the end of the winter. All in all though, what a fantastic car.
says 6.3 on here it is in fact a 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 engine this harks back to it has historical reference as we go in it's got a fantastic pan roof that goes back or it tilt and slides and it's got a mesh also that can go over it giving you a bit more kind of a secluded light great in the back I've got two six foot suns and they can get in the back no problem obviously one of these has moved forward a little bit beautiful condition so here's the binnacle of all the lights does a good enough job this is in kind of AMG mode which shows the ending temperature and it's blue until it reaches the right level and it's only at that point in my ownership certainly that I then put my foot down and start enjoying the car I say that I don't often do that I often use this just as nice pleasant cruiser and of course if you want to overtake a car at any given moment you can the main thing i don't really like about this car and it's only one thing is probably the antiquity of the, the look of the sat navs and audio system now the stereo itself is amazing i mean utterly amazing and um, whoever bought this fitted aftermarket speaker system in it which is what i heard from the person i bought it off uh, and it sounds remarkable whether it's through the dvd or the radio or dab or through an mp3 player or it's attached to my phone for example it just sounds incredible but the sat nav is just rubbish i wouldn't even bother getting it up here i use one of these things and i put my phone in it and just use Waze or google maps i mean the kind of black's quite nice the seats are very nice and you've got full control over it you've got full memory on the passenger side and the driver's side they're very very comfortable very very supportive all in all you couldn't ask for anything more i mean yeah it's a bit boring the front but it's no worse than any other german car to be honest it's not about flair it's about functionality and the ability to get to where you want and i like do like the dual climate zone control with the ease of changing the temperatures and very quickly putting on the heated seats which to me is important the thing I love most is probably this Alcantara steering wheel. I mean, it's done on 62,000 miles now, so the Alcantara is getting a little bit rough, but still feels utterly delightful. The steering itself is excellent. The gears aren't great. They seem to be of that time, 2015. DCT is much, much better now. So when you put it into manual here, so manual there, you've got Sport Plus, Sport and Comfort. When you do put it in manual, and you use these they're not that fast to operate they're not as bad as the bentley's but they're not quick um so mostly i put it in sport plus to have the fun and occasionally go down to manual when i just feel like it have a bit more engagement in any mode you wish if you press this button here if you press it it goes into sport mode if you press it and hold it it takes the traction control completely off now if it's in the wet you're going to have a devil's task trying to control the car, but it's bloody hilarious. Even in damp conditions with, with the traction control on, it is still one twist of the steering wheel, big accelerator, and it'll float around the car. It's just woof, which is actually incredible fun if you know it's coming. If you don't know it's coming, you're going to scare yourself. But this is supposed to be a drift monster, and it is thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. Okay, so the story with this car is that I was looking for a family car because so I've got three grown-up sons. And obviously a Ferrari and the upcoming Lotus Amira at that point and my little Bath weren't really up to the job. I thought the Bath would be, but it's a tiny little car. It was good for small journeys. Now, I didn't really want a saloon or an estate. I wanted a coupe because they're, generally speaking, like for like, a better-looking car. So I looked at the obvious candidates. First of all, you think of BMW M4s, M3s, but... To be honest, I just don't, I've got a problem with BMWs and it's uh, it's purely down to me. It's because I grew up in Bracknell where the headquarters of BMW UK were and every Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane and Jill had a bloody BMW. They were all over the place. So to me, they were just incredibly common and synonymous with people who just got them almost free from working at BMW, so oh, I just got this thing about it. I've never owned a BMW, car or motorcycle. I used to say I never would, um, but there are some excellent, excellent BMWs out there, especially the M cars, of course. And I've got some favourites going back, like the E36 M3 Evolution, either in the coupe or spider form. I love the original 3 litre CSL, not the Batmobile one, just the normal one. Beautiful, beautiful car. 
So I discounted that, then I thought, well, there's RS4s, RS6s. I'd already had an RS3 and Golf R, so I went to something a bit bigger, something different. And then I thought, well, the Quadrifoglio, Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio is the obvious candidate. It's Italian, it looks good, it sounds good, it goes light stink. And at that time, when I was looking, at some point about last year, 2021-ish, end of 2021, it was still a car very much in vogue, been out a few years, yeah, well respected. I'd beaten out on it twice, both with both times, I believe, with my eldest son, who's the car nut like me, you might have seen on my videos, Jake. Um, and I was really almost pushed the button on it, because the garage that sells the, the Fiat's and the Bath's also sells Alfa Romeo's, of course, and are very close to getting this Grigio-coloured, which wasn't my ideal choice, but it's the only one I had in stock, a Quadrifoglio. Very close, rang them up, da 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 um, but before that all happened, Jake said uh, that one of his favourite cars ever growing up was the Mercedes C63. I'm not sure why that was, what he'd seen or heard or watched on YouTube or maybe it was a car that went past him for what the hell was that? Because they've got massive presence, more presence than any BMW or Audi, in my opinion. So we looked at C63's AMG versions, of course. And uh, yeah, beastly cars, huge engine, natural aspirated V8s. And then I, it dawned on me, for the same price as an older Quadrifoglio, um, for a couple of years older than that, I can pick up an Edition 507 C63, which I'll, t I'll tell you all about, or have already told you all about, on my walk around. And that car just has even more presence than the standard C63. As soon as I saw it in pictures, I thought, oh yeah. And I thought, well, I did like the black, <laughs> because it's more mean. I do like the white because of the contrast of all the black bits on it, but the black one in meanness. When I saw the one I've got now, which is fully black, black tints, black wheels, I thought, yeah, okay, that's a little bit special. And so, uh, didn't hang around. I didn't even go out in the car. I got delivered from up north. Uh, I walked around it, a couple of issues, they took a bit of money off it. And uh, I've been stunningly des delighted ever since. Utterly superb car. These Germans, they uh, they know how to make a car, don't they? I mean, to be fair, every BMW, Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes I've been in are just impeccably, impeccably built. Uh, annoyingly so, especially when I'm used to Ferraris, Lancias, Alphas, <laughs> Fiat's, uh, and cars of that ilk. So uh, I've, I felt confident getting Mercedes would be all right, even a powerful one. And so far, I've been proved right. I had this car almost a year now, and it's been absolutely flawless. Not one single thing has gone wrong, had an inkling of going wrong. It drives and rides the same as when I bought it. It had a full B service at Mercedes, which is the full Monty, only costing about 400 quid. Uh, and that went through flying colours. In fact, from underneath, they said it's one of the best looking chassis and suspension setups they've seen on this car. Very good, zero corrosion and it, everything was firm and taut. That gave me great confidence. Engine was tight. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And the best of all was like 400 pounds when I was used to seeing bills of two and a half thousand plus for the Bentley and the Ferrari. That was a real shock. In fact, when they said it was, it was like 389 pound, I went, sorry? So that's the full service, right? They went, yeah. <laughs> and they didn't add anything on it. And I heard Mercedes dealers uh, can be a bit unscrupulous, but, uh, Quite frankly, if they'd said it was 750 and added a few bits and bobs on it, I would have signed on the dotted line straight away, thinking that was still a bargain in relative terms. So I had this car absolutely thrilled with it. Now it's currently up for sale because I cannot afford, to be honest and upfront and transparent, the Ferrari, the Lotus Amira, and this Mercedes. Now that's mainly due to the outgoing money. This cost the less to run, however. The Amir is bought and paid for, the Ferrari is almost bought and paid for with minimal payments now, but this car is costing me £833 a month ongoing. I mean, yes, that's on a repayment over a couple of years, but that's a big hit. So on that basis, this is the one to go, and I'm actually devastated, because this might well be the best car of the lot in terms of absolute, utter build quality. I thoroughly enjoy it, it's super fast. It's incomparable to the other two they're all such different cars or all they're all sports cars it couldn't it couldn't be more different in a way what this has is that it feels the fastest when you're going along in a straight line such as the torque and the way it builds up and just keeps going 
and the noise it creates in those higher revs is biblical. But it just feels like the faster car. And of course, it goes, it goes around bends pretty well. It's a decent suspension setup, despite the weight of the car. And driving it is, is amazing because, as by sunset, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde car. One moment you're pootering about in a luxury sedan with no rattles, no cracks or squeaks, in an extreme comfort with these lovely seats, fantastic stereo, good heating system. The next minute you kind of tickle the controller over to Sport Plus or stick it in manual, and suddenly it's like the devil's trying to attack you. In fact, my son Jay came out with another great saying. It was like Tyson in his heyday coming at you straight off the belt. <laughs> oh my god, he said that when the car was coming towards him on some of the filming earlier. And it is that kind of car, it is like a Mike Tyson, it's a brutal, smash your face off car.